Good morning and welcome to the Talk of the Town. My guest this morning is Dr. Pakhi Soti Sarvan Muttu, Executive Director of the Centre for Policy Alternatives. Good morning and welcome, Doctor. Good morning. South Asia stands at a pivotal juncture as several uh, of uh, the South Asian countries prepare for significant elections next year, including India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, as well as Sri Lanka. Speak to us about the challenges, opportunities and implications um, since most of the South Asian countries have common issues. And second of all, what's the responsibility of the Sri Lankan state to ensure um, that they act in the best interests of the people? Well, I mean, all of these elections, I think they have some things, some issues in common. And that is the whole sort of majoritarian ideology that is coming through, which leads into the ethno religious conflicts from India, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan too. Others are, well, allied to that are the problems of misgovernance. Yeah, terrible, terrible misgovernance which are leading to the economic catastrophes in Pakistan they are not dissimilar to us in a lot of ways. Indeed, the misdeeds of governance are also with regard to the growing pangs, I think, of new systems of governance like in Nepal, for example, they have a federal system and they believe that it may not be doing whatever government and governance is supposed to do and so the monarchists are supposed to be uh, rising. In the Sri Lankan case, I mean, we have, our social contract is in tatters. We have to rebuild it. We have to ensure that the cultural entitlement that people have in this country is changed. That, for example, we can't, we can't sustain a 1.3 million public service. We can't sustain the, having the seventh or something like that largest army in the world. Mm -hmm. We don't have the money to do that. And we have to be able to go down to the people and explain to them why certain sacrifices are going to be necessary if we are going to get out of this crisis and grow and prosper. We need to talk about AI. How many, how many schools in this country have a computer? The police and the armed forces are an extension of the state. Um, we know that freedom from torture is a non-derogable right. However, uh, we keep hearing of instances of arbitrary arrests, of um, people being beaten up in prison, in police, people dying in police custody. In terms of a lack of accountability, in terms of impunity, how dangerous is this? It is an absolute cancer that has, well, I mean, it has eaten up the social contract. We've done, over the past two decades, surveys which show that the police is the most unpopular, disliked institution in the country. So policemen do these things because they have contacts with politicians who get them off. You know, they are not inherently sadistic, are they? No. They do this because they've been told to do it, and then it becomes a habit. There is... Human life seems to be very cheap. And they can take it without any one to answer to. Mm -hmm. You know, so that system is totally... We have to change it from education. We have to change it from within the existing police force. We have to have senior leaders there who have integrity, who are able to stand up for what is right. And if we don't have them in the force, then I think we should look at bringing them from outside. In terms of reforming the police force, how important is it to um, have continuous uh, training programs, sensitization programs uh, from a multitude of um, experts, stakeholders. I think it's tremendously important to do that, but we've had quite a few. We've had quite a few, but what is the point? If they go out and they're told, if you don't do this, you will be sent to some godforsaken part of the country, or X and Y might happen to you. You know, so mm. it's that against whatever good things you've been told in these training programs, which uh, you can't practice. Right. How do we tie in the policymakers with all of this? Well, I mean, I think the thing is this, is that, look, let's start with the political parties. 
they are run like fiefdoms. People who are given domination are the ones who have money and who have used force of one kind or another in order to get things done. So they are seen as the popular ones. I mean, how many people in Parliament out of the 225 MPs know anything about debt restructuring, know anything about the governance diagnostic of the IMF, know anything about ATA? You know, so these are the people who are making decisions. So you have to change it in terms of introduce, I think, we have to get some kind of intra-party democracy, mm. you know, and you have to have those people who believe in reform actually joining political parties or forming political parties of their own and being the difference that they want to see. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Pakisoti Sarumottu. Thank you. And it's back to the studio.